Okay, I'm going to drop this image onto the Illustrator document or the actual icon for the program. And it opens this file of this girl. And I'm going to get my layers organized right off the bat. Drag this out. Double click on this, name an image. I'm going to lock the layer so it doesn't shift on me. And I'm going to dim it to 75. Okay. Um, I need to create a new layer, and this is going to be the white layer. And I'm going to create another layer that I'm going to use as a background black box. I'll name that the black layer. And on the black layer, which is selected, I'm going to create this box that will sit behind it so that in the process of creating the work, I can take a look at it and check to see how I'm doing with it. Rich black over 50. This is roughly where I like to have my blacks, CMYK measure. I'll move this layer down here, select white, lock this one, put the eye out, and then draw the contour of this girl because it's a white decal and it's going to be on a black surface. So I'm going to go through here and just draw quickly, paying attention to the texture that, you know, her hair is going to have a different texture than her face. And since this is a white vinyl decal, and I want to make sure that her hair shows up black and not reversed out so that she looks like she's 90, I'm going to go in here and uh, pay close attention to get the texture on her hair roughly indicated properly. And I'm also taking into account the fact that um, the limitations of the process with vinyl, and the limitations are going to be that you can't uh, make things too fine, too thin, because if you do that, it has a tendency to tear, and your decal could take you know multiple times to execute it properly, and it could cost you and or the person that's doing the job for you some money, and that ends up costing you more money in the long run. Okay, continue on. And again, I'm using the corner anchor points where... I have um, abrupt changes in direction, which is pretty much just about everywhere here. Now, do I want to have these wisps across her neck? I think I'm going to make an artistic decision here and say that that's not going to happen for this because it's confusing. So I'm just going to go back up here. Oh, I did connect it, so i got to put the pen tool down here until I get the slash mark. Then I can continue. And I think I'm just going to focus on doing her portrait. Great chin line, jawline with this girl. So down here, I don't really have to concern myself with anything because this will eventually be cropped out due to the fact that it's going to be lower than her neckline. So remember, it's not enough to be a technician. You have to start sitting here and understanding the process so that you can design it appropriately so it'll work. We were just having a conversation at the break, and we were talking about how printers really think that graphic designers are idiots. It's because we'll do something that looks great on the screen with just this assumption that it'll print or that it'll be executed properly in the media that we're requesting, say vinyl, but that's not always the case. White arrow, direct selection tool, modify my anchor point length or handles, and I'm good with that. I have a solid white silhouette. I'm going to go give this a fill of white and get rid of the stroke. Now I want to do an offset path so that I can get this to be white outlined. Object, path, offset, path. And I'm in inches, so I need to change that so it's in points so I can get whole numbers. Command R brings up my rulers, right click will give me points, and then if I try this again, I'm now going to be dealing with whole numbers. Preview this, you can see how big the duplicate became. I like the integrity of the outside contour, so I'm going to go with a negative 2 to see how that works for me. And I'm satisfied with that. And I'm going to go and grab both of these, shift click, shift click. 
Actually, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to save this one. So I'm going to copy this one and let it float in the pasteboard or the clipboard. And I'm going to Pathfinder this. Okay, so now if we preview this, you can see that it's all black, which is the majority of this. So now it's going to be an easy thing for me to go in here and draw the face. Now, what I can do is I'm going to draw the contour of the face now. And again, I'm going to skip that hair and I'm just going to draw the contour of her face. And I'm going to try to overlap this down here because eventually I'm going to put that together because it's white. And I'm going to leave this to float in that negative space. Now I'm going to come in here and add a few wisps. But I'm going to do the best I can to make her hair look really, really nicely groomed. Give it a little bit of character. Again, you should always carry your artistic license because you can never tell when somebody's going to ask you, why'd you do that? And you're going to have to produce it from your wallet. And if you can do that, nobody can question it. Okay. Let's go and preview this now. Okay, you can see that it's coming along. Now with this, my pencil or my pen tool Command Y is going to get me this, and I want to go in here and I want to click on that anchor that line and my pen tool. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to get rid of this line segment here. Command Y so I can preview what I got going on, and I'm going to close this shape right here. <coughs> Oops, wrong tool. It needs to be just pen tool. Okay, so I get the slash there. I get the circle here, meaning that I've closed the neck. Option key to convert this to a corner. And then I'm going to change this to a white. It's white, but it's probably... Still a compound path. Okay, so this is fine. This needs to be repaired. Command Y. And the way I'll do that is I'll do an offset path of this face. And I'm going to draw this. Close it here. Command Y. And I'm going to use that to punch. Let's see. Let's cut this so I can see what I'm up to. This needs to be white. This is going to be white. This is white. This needs to be black. So Command F. And I'm going to use this, Command Y, I need the hair to be selected and I need the contour of the head to be selected and then I'm going to knock that. Okay, so got that, I've got that, Command Y, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to use the face, copying the face, command Y, and grabbing this, and I'm going to see about getting that to happen. Command Y. I need this to be the bottom of the chin, however. 
So what I can do is, let's just, oh, that's what's going on. Inadvertently, I deleted this whole thing. So this is convenient. I'll get rid of that white arrow. Pull this down. Modify this. Pen tool so I can use the delete and then just pull the handle like this. Command Y. Okay, make sure you save these on occasion. Decal portrait to my desktop, that's fine. CS5, everything's good to go. Now, when you do the version, you want to make sure you save this down because CS5 is brand new. You want to save it down perhaps to 10 to make sure that wherever you give this to someone, it's the worst case scenario. You go and you take it to somebody in a pinch. Well, we only have CS10. We don't even have CS. This is going to make sure that they can open it and do the job for you. And essentially what we're doing here hasn't really changed since CS10. It's still the same pro program, same tools in that regard in terms of uh, cutting for decals. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to get rid of the black. I want to create a new layer so I can drop the details on the new layer and I'll get rid of the eye in the white area and then I need to draw the black shapes. So I'm going to start to try and quick this through. Now I'm going to refer to drawing the Marvel way here. Drawing the Marvel way indicates ways that you can characterize or caricature eyes in a way that's beautiful and yet you're keeping her youthful look by not giving her bags underneath her eyes and uh, you make her eyelashes look healthy instead of um, a, some sort of a, uh, a line of fence posts. Pathfinder this together, get my pen tool again, and I'm going to go and make sure that I indicate or imply the lower lid and use this to cut that. And I'm going to give her just a gleam, a little dot right here. That'll be punched through so it looks like a high value little shine in her eye. Oh, actually, I don't want to do that. That needs to be white. I'm losing track of what I'm doing here. This shape is going to get pushed through the eye or through the white face and that's why that white dot will just be floating in a negative space. I have to remember that I'm designing it to be a white decal on a black surface. White arrow. I want to keep my the integrity of my uh, anchor points. Get rid of the fill. And again, I'm going to simplify this because I can't get into all this detail when I'm limited to one color. But the limitations are an awesome thing. Limitations make your life easy. If somebody told you that, oh, well, do whatever you want to, whatever color, as many as you want, whatever process you want to, if you're like me, that would be scary. Scary because, you know, it's a lot of freedom and what is the right answer? There is no right answer in that regard. Okay, so pathfindering these together. And notice I'm selecting with the white arrow. I'm selecting, as long as I'm not touching the contour edge, it grabs the whole shape. Pen tool is letter P. And I'm just creating a shape to use to cut the eye. Then I'll grab this and I'll slide this over here. What happened? It disappeared. What happened? Command Y. The vector information is still there. But I, I created this circle prior to this one. Therefore, dragging a copy, this one's going to be below this. So I need to right click and arrange, bring it to the front. Okay, so now I need to draw some nostrils. Let 
let's just be quick about it. I'll drag a copy, reflect tool, click my cursor right there, and pull it around with the shift key, making both of those black. Letter I for the eyedropper. Now again, I'm drawing black shapes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the opening of her mouth So I can see what I'm doing. Smart guides are in my way. They're kind of disrupting me. So I'm going to go through this and get rid of that. And I'm going to just continue to draw. And I can go back here and get the slash. I really don't like that. So I'm going to get rid of that. Eyedropper, letter I. Okay, that's fine. I just want to be able to see the teeth underneath it because I'm going to indicate those right now. And so that the teeth don't look like they're on the lip, I'm going to make, make sure that I have a gap at the top. And I don't want to look like David Letterman either, so I'm not going to put that gap. I'm just going to make it one continuous thing. And I'll imply the gum that will imply, again, imply the separation in her teeth. Now she looks like there's no calcium where she gets water. Not calcium, but uh, chlorine, so that's a problem. Let's go and make that look better. White. Okay, I can come up with some little hints over here to imply the nose so she doesn't look like she's um, Got a bad nose job. Ooh, I just got twisted up. Grab that handle, pull it around. Get this white arrow. Click on that and manipulate the length on this handle. And perhaps drag this in just a bit more and then turn it to black. And same thing's gonna go on the other nostril here. And again, you don't wanna put a lot of lines on a girl's face, especially a young girl, because you'll age her. Okay, lower lip, or let's see, how do I want to do that lower lip? Let's, let's preview this. I can take care of this ear really quickly, so I'm going to draw the ear right here. Being sure to leave a gap between the face and the ear to let black come through there. Letter I, sample that, and let's go preview how I'm doing. Okay, so I need to show some lips. And I need some eyebrows yet. Actually not really able to see the eyebrows. It's going to look a little odd. Okay, maybe I'm going to add just a real fine. Audrey Hepburn style. And again, I'm being sure to overlap the hair because I'll pathfinder those together in a moment. And let's see. If I squint, it helps me to determine what's going on here. So I'm going to go and draw the lower lip. By squinting. Let's see, decisions, decisions. It's always a better idea to have this sketched out roughly ahead of time so that you can go back after the fact. It's better to plan first and then to come in than to try to do this on the fly because I'm not sure that this is going to work out. But it'll work for my purposes. You'll get the idea of it and you'll see, you know, if you don't plan ahead of time. You could end up with somebody that looks like she's got a mustache, which is probably not the best thing for her. Command 8 makes two shapes act as one. Undo the lock here. Use that on top to punch through the bottom. Grab this from this anchor or this layer down to the white layer again. And proceed to grab all the blacks. So I'm going to use my magic wand tool and I'm going to grab all the blacks. 
Command eight makes them all behave like one shape. Shift click on the face, pathfinder through, and there's a finished decal. I'm going to arrow key this out just a smidge. I'm going to select all to make sure that I don't have any strokes, and I don't. And let's see, what can I do? This lip is not, I'm not pleased with it, but I can go back at another time and go and modify that. Let's go and see about the hair. Okay, one color again, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to add some, some texture. I'm not going to draw a caterpillar stampede, which is what a lot of people a lot of people will do when they go and they think when they're doing hair they're going to draw, you know, if I draw 500 lines and just scatter them all over the area of the head, it's going to look like natural hair, but that's not the case. Now I'm sure you're going to do a much better job than me when you guys take your time. But I'm hoping that I can get this video to you guys so you guys can see a little bit of what I'm up to. And hopefully it will help you this week and of course your execution of this assignment. Remember it's due next week in the computer for everybody to review. And if it looks like yours is inversed, meaning what's white is black and what's black is white, it's back to the drawing board. That's a part of this whole project is for you guys to develop the ability to see. Getting too redundant with my lengths on the highlighted hair. Almost done here and then this is going to be the final touches in a one color project. And this again, when you do this file, you do it well using the Pathfinder tool. You can use this file for decals, you can use it for etching, you can use it for silk screening. And that's the beauty of Illustrator is that it's a multiversal, uh, multifaceted, very versatile program. And uh, I prefer it because it doesn't have um, pixels to be concerned with in terms of this type of stuff. Any questions? Oh, the frame? The frame? Um, you asked me to... Oh, yeah, that's um, right. I'm about to do one for you. Okay. okay, so now the decision here is, should I make this all go to the top of the head? I think maybe so. Command Y... And I'm just going to draw this up here like this and come down here, close it, and then I'm going to pathfinder it together with that. Oops, that's not good. So I want to make sure that I draw this so that it overlaps. Here's another um, technique for you. If you grab the pencil tool, I just want to make sure that I get this line to terminate in here so that when it overlaps, it's going to be able to pathfinder together. So the craftsmanship's not that important. You could uh, reposition or reconstruct this by doing something like this. And you can change it. But, you know, we only have two anchor points. And that's the beauty when you work with an economy of anchor points. It just makes your life easier in general. You can just grab this anchor point, pull the handle, grab this anchor point, drop that in there get the pen tool, hit the option key, and then I can convert this so that I can get what I need in terms of the overlap that I'm looking for. That's good enough. Okay, so command Y, that and that, and we'll pathfinder it together. Whoops. Zoom out, command zero. Okay, you can do a better job. I think if you do less, you might get something that happens. 
I mean, it looks like she threw an egg up in the air here. <laughs> but uh, there's definitely a way to go and fix that. You can make it a finer situation with the line length or with the uh, thickness here. I'm grabbing this and getting rid of that. And I'm going to go and do, like I was saying earlier, come up with a frame. Okay, and I'm happy about that. I'm not happy about this, however. So this is where I'm going to go in here and doctor this stuff up. Don't accept it just because that's what the computer handed you. You're the designer. You make it happen. This has got to have a white frame, no fill, and it needs to be thicker than that. Okay, I'm happy with that. Move this over a smidge. Maybe I'll just doctor this up to make this look like a true ponytail. Okay, I'm pretty much ready to go. So now what I need to do is I'm going to get this, and like I covered earlier, object, expand. We'll get this uh, frame and expand it so that we get nothing but the shape. You see how now that's an actual shape? If we preview this, you can see that right now it's nothing but a square and the razor blade is going to cut a white square. So that was expand fill? Object expand the stroke. Okay, so now the issue I have is this white is going to cut off some weird things here. So I need to go and make sure that I get this set up so it's ready to go. So here's a pen tool again. And I'm going to go here, here, and I'm going to cut this so that that hair goes through and it doesn't get impeded by that frame. Using the Pathfinder tool. Over here, I need to get rid of the bottom part of this hair. And again, use your black arrow because if you grab portions of it, that's not going to do it. Oops, wrong one. That one. Then over here, I need to get rid of this section of white and... That's about it. It's right in there. That's going to be the issue. Letter P. Using that to cut that. This is an odd area. Not happy about that. So I'm going to go and just get rid of this too. And just grabbing that and the frame and using this to cut that. Oops, wrong one. That. Oops, what happened? <clears throat> Let's ungroup this. This and this is all I want to deal with. Not that other side. That was causing the problem. Voila. Command Y so we can see what we're up to. I need to reposition this slightly. Command Y. And now the last draw is to see about getting this taken care of. Pen tool. Command Y. Zoom in. Marquee zoom. And this doesn't matter if it's overlapping the hair because I'm not dealing with the hair. I'm only dealing with this frame. Oops, not that. Not that. Shift, click. What the heck? I'm hitting the wrong key. Shift key, click. Cut. Okay. So now, this is one shape of a frame. That's another shape of the frame. I need those to act like one shape, therefore I need to hit what? Command 8. Compound path. Shift key. Click on this, Pathfinder that together. Now I'm going to get this and this, Pathfinder that together. And now if I hit Command Y, you can see that it's perfectly clean. That's the absolute center of the black square. That's a good oh. point. She's not. Uh, I was going to say, leave it. It looks great. <laughs> you want to give her a mole, we can give her a mole. Very Gucci mole. Okay. If I want to put type down here, white arrow, 
grab this, grab this, extend it down. And let's give her a name. What should we name her? Let's name her Sadie because that's the name that I've got in my mind lately. That's going to be the girl that comes into my life next month. Let's see what do we got going on. Impact, I think, is a terrible font. Why did I even think of that one? I like a sans serif font. Future is a great one. And then I'm going to create outlines. Command shift letter O. Shift key, constrain this, drag it out. I'm going to need to move this up slightly. White arrow, grab this. Shift key, grab that anchor point, drag it down. And now you really don't have to punch this because the machine's going to read it correctly. But I would, yeah, because it's still going to look, look, command Y, it's still going to cut right. But I personally believe that you should cut it through so that if for some reason you've got someone that's incompetent that grabs this file and they drag it and then they forgot the type and they have to redo it themselves if they don't know the program, it's just better to do it yourself. I just did it. Now if I grab this, the whole thing moves. Okay? And that's it. That's all there is to it. Get this here, shift key, expand this out so we can get a better look. Tab key, F, command zero, and then marquee on this for presentation purposes. And there it is. Not so hot. She is very rock and roll. Okay, that's it.